The events unfolding in Afghanistan are leaving many military men and women who did tours abroad speechless and heartbroken. Uh, the Taliban seized power in just days over regions U.S. troops worked decades to uplift and protect. The news our reporter Kent Lutzen joins us with more on what it could mean for those regions. Kent? Good morning, Cerise and Jenny. That's exactly right. That's why we have Shelly Heil with us. She spent three years over in Afghanistan helping them build their government, and she's also an economist. So, Shelly, can you kind of explain what you did over there for those three years? Sure, it was a government program through the U.S. government that was intended to improve service offerings at the municipal government level. So we were working with municipal governments from Bamiyan, which is kind of the center of the country, over to the Pakistan border. So working with those municipalities, improving services, helping people and communities understand what municipal services were, and just trying to improve the government. So you spent three years over there, and obviously with these new developments, is there a fear that that will all just crumble now, all that work that you you did. Sure, it's hard to watch things that you worked on um, maybe significantly go away. Um, I'm an economist that works in development environments, um, and so usually we find if human beings see something and experience something, they're more likely to try to hold on to it. So I might just be wanting a positive thought, but I think there will be sustainability for something that was left there just because the people have experienced it. What about women's rights? I mean, do you, do you believe that that structure over the last two decades for women will still be there in the next month? Month. I mean, things have obviously moved very fast. Of course, I no one can predict the future, and I can only I look at the past. And so, with this group that's in there, in the past, it hasn't been. Um, you know, women were cloaked; they were told to be put aside; they were not allowed to walk in the streets, and they certainly weren't allowed in education. So, um, it doesn't make me hopeful for what the future will be. And so, you know, uh, in the next half hour, can you kind of explain a little bit quickly about, you know, the visa process that you're working on right now? Sure. It's a process that was put in place. The government put it in in 2009 and started uh, actually working on the visas in 2014. It offers people that did work on a U.S. government program that at least worked there for two years, had a U.S. supervisor that would write recommendation letters. It allows them to apply to bring themselves and their immediate family uh, to the U.S. All right, so Jenny and Cerise, in the next half hour, we're going to kind of push more into the, that area of the visas and ask how she's, you know, really helping people on the ground still try to get back to the United States. In Omaha, Kent Lutzen, 3 News Now.